Good morning. All right, we are in John uh, chapter 12 today, reading verses 44 through 50. Let's pray, then we will read the scripture for today. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much that you sent your son Christ. Thank you that you sent him to save us. Um, God, we pray that you would um, soften our hearts, cause us to obey, bring us repentance and belief in Christ, and save us from the judgment on the last day. We pray um, that we would remember it, it is through your word that you um, have chosen to act um, in this way in our lives, that the Holy Spirit moves through um, your word in a powerful way. And so today, as we study it, we pray that you would um, soften our hearts and change us and make us obedient. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and read John 12, 44 through 50. And Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. God's word to us today in the book of John. Let's observe. We see that Jesus cries out. When he cries out, he tells those in earshot that whoever sees and believes in him sees and believes in the one who sent him. He says that those who believe in Jesus are brought out of the darkness because he came in the light. Jesus did not come to judge, but to save the world. Um, those who do not believe will be judged according to the word he spoke. And that will happen on the last day. The Father commanded him what to say and speak. And the Father's commandment is eternal life. Jesus spoke on the Father's authority. So as we read the scripture from today, one question um, immediately you know, pops into my mind. Who is Jesus crying out to here? Uh, because we just read in um, 37 through 43 that Jesus had withdrawn himself and, and the people uh, were not believing, right? Actually, that was in 36 when it said Jesus with, withdrew himself and then it spoke about their unbelief in 37 through 43. So who is Jesus um, crying out to here? Now, I, I think what's possible is that John told about Jesus withdrawing and then when, when, he, when he was speaking of Jesus withdrawing, he, he then kind of quickly went on to explain why he was withdrawing. And then after he de described that, then he very briefly went back and um, told us something that Jesus cried out as he was withdrawing. That's possible. Um, I don't really know for sure, but it's clear that Jesus is speaking to someone He's speaking to um, not his disciples, but he's crying out as though there are a lot of people to speak to, a lot of people who are hearing him. So I, I think maybe I'm inclined to, to think um, that he is crying this out as he is withdrawing. And this is the last public um discourse or declaration that he makes, his last public statement before um, his arrest. Um, 
from here on out, we will see him deal with his disciples um, privately. So this is the last public address of Jesus Christ before his trial. So it's probably pretty, pretty important. And regardless of who he's speaking to, what we see here is that this is kind of a summary of Jesus's ministry. It doesn't contain every single thing he said, but it contains all the big ideas that he communicated, um, such as who he is. It starts right off the top. Who is he? Um, he says, whoever believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me, and whoever sees me sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light. All right. So we might hope that when people see us, they don't see us, but they see Jesus or even the Father. Um, we might hope, uh, we, we certainly shouldn't hope that anyone believe in us. So Christ is clearly different than just a, a person. Um, he is the Son of God. He is God himself. And, um, and we certainly don't come into this world as light, but Jesus did. He's telling us who he is here. He is one with the Father. Um, how else can he say what he just said about um, whoever believes in him believes in him who sent him. And whoever sees him sees the one who sent him. Um, and then he is light. Light come to um, free people from darkness so they may not remain in darkness. So why he, why he came into the world as he did? Of course, he came as light so that the believer may not remain in darkness. And he came to save the world. And he says that in verse 47. Okay? Um, so that's why he came into the world as he did. So we now know who he is. We know why he came into the world as he did. Um, and then he tells us how those of us who are in the world are to be saved or brought out of darkness. And it is by believing in him. Because he says that if anyone hears my word and does not keep them, I do not judge them, for I did not come to judge the world, but save the world. Um, I'm sorry, there was one earlier than that. I have come into this world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Okay, so this is how uh, we are saved, how we are brought out of the darkness by believing in him. Um, and now, the, the verse I just read, 47, is what happens if we don't believe. If anyone hears my word and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my wor word has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. So if we don't believe, if we don't obey, if we don't um, keep his commandments, then we are judged. And when are we judged? On the last day. By what are we judged? Christ's word that he brought in his first um, coming. And so this is how... Um, as I spoke about when we went through John 9, how his statement, for judgment I came into this world, can make sense with his statement that I did not come to judge the world. Right? It's not, it's not um, a contradiction. It's actually perfectly in line with what he's saying here. He came in his first um, coming to give the word, which saves, but also judges. So he came, for judgment, he came into the world. He sets up the judgment that will happen on the, on the last day. But that is when the judgment actually happens. So he did not come to judge the world, but he came to save the world. And by saving some, some are left to judgment on the last day because of their unbelief and their disobedience. So that's what happens if we don't believe. 
And then he answers also where his authority comes from. And of course, being Jesus, one of the three members of the Trinity, one of the three aspects of God, um, he of course has authority on his own. But what he says here is that he does not act on his own authority as he is on earth. He receives authority from the Father. He was sent by the Father. So the Father who sent him told him what to say. So even his words are from the Father. And that's where his authority comes from. And, and Jesus spoke just as the Father told him to speak. So this is a summary of pretty much everything Christ um, said throughout his ministry, encapsulated in, now it doesn't have all the details, obviously. Um, if, if this was the only passage we needed, then we wouldn't need the rest of the book of John. But this would be a great passage to memorize because it reminds us of all the other things that Christ said because it, it summarizes them. Now, on this, this uh, aspect of the judging, if we are to come away with something from this passage, I think, uh, to apply to our own lives, first would be um, we, we need to believe in Christ. We need to obey Christ. Uh, I don't want to come to the last day and have his word judging me. I want my belief in him and his work on the cross to cover my sin so that the words of Christ are saving me instead of judging me and condemning me. Um, because the truth um, of Christ is good news to those who believe, but it is it is judgment to those who do not believe. Um, but as we go about fulfilling the Great Commission, about sharing Christ with those around us, I think it's important for us <coughs> to remember how Christ spoke of judgment even from himself in his first coming, that he was not coming to judge. And we are not the judges of our neighbor either. <clears throat> and this is a truth that um, I think the world understands and, and, they, and they kind of, they, they grasp this truth and they do it wrongly and they try to apply it in a wrong way. And if we don't understand how judgment works, then we could be um, greatly hindered in the work of Christ as we try to share the gospel with those around us. And by that I mean that the world hears Christ say that he didn't come to judge and judge not lest you be judged. And then you go and you, you point out sin in someone's life or you point out how the way someone is living contradicts the word of God or dishonors Christ. And they say, whoa, 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 don't judge. You're not supposed to judge. Jesus said, don't judge. So if you're a follower of Jesus, you can't judge. If we don't understand judgment and how it works and what Christ meant by these words, then we can be derailed. We have to have a response to this. And the response is simply the same response that, that Jesus has here, that his statement here, that the word is what's judging. He's not judging. He came to save. And how is he saving? By speaking the truth of God, showing them what the Father had to say, which shows us to be sinners, shows us to be living contrary to God's word. This is what Jesus did. He came to, and revealed that we are hopelessly lost and we need a savior, that we cannot um, achieve a right relationship with God through any action of our own. 
And so, yes, of course, when we go to someone in love to share the gospel with them, they are going to see that judgment awaits them. But we should not be the ones bringing that judgment, only graciously revealing to them that judgment is inevitable. And so it's through this um, lens of loving your neighbor And it's not just a lens, it's a reality of how we should be thinking and and acting on our neighbor's behalf. Not just a game of how we word things, but it should be coming from our heart, this desire for our neighbor, this desire that they see the truth and come to faith in Christ. And we share with them not to judge them, but to save them from judgment. Okay, And of course, as truth comes up against falsehood, falsehood um, becomes indignant and, and tries to fight, right? Sin does not like to be exposed. But just because someone tries to throw this judgment thing at you, saying you're judging me, it doesn't mean you are judging. We need to make sure we're not doing that in our hearts. But just because someone says it doesn't mean we are. It could just be sin trying to um, hide from the light. Get that light away from me. So again, we need to, in love, approach those who need the truth, which is everyone, and shed light on sin. Now we've all seen in our own lives as we interact with people who are in sin, who are either sinning against us or sinning against others, that they don't like to have their sin exposed. And they will throw things at us to try to get us to stop. And I think we can all see in our own lives as well that when we are sinning and someone comes to us to tell us that we are in sin, we don't like that. So we need to remember as brothers and sisters in Christ approach us about our sin that it is a loving thing to do. It is not a judgmental thing to do. It is simply pointing out the truth of the judgment to come and trying to help us get to a place where we have repented, where we believe and confess Christ as Lord. And we need to do the same thing as we share. I hope that makes sense. I hope it is helpful. Um, We don't need to be afraid to share the gospel. It is not hateful and it is not judgmental. It is actually saving people from judgment. My conclusion for today is that as Christians, the most loving thing we can do is to share Christ's light through his words to those in darkness around us. We share the commandments of God not to judge our neighbor, but in prayerful hope that they may escape judgment on the last day by believing in Jesus. Let's pray. (sighs) Father, um, You are good. You are so good. And the grace, mercy, and patience that you've shown us is amazing. It's truly amazing. And the fact that you have shown it while not undermining your justice, holiness, um, your righteous judgment, and even your wrath is more astounding. And the fact that as these two um, aspects, or all of these different aspects of your character um, come together and we see them in light of how they all work towards your glory, um, we learn to see you in, in such a light that um, how can we be ever left the same? God, help us to bow and worship, to come before you in gratitude and humility and uh, trembling. (laughs) Um, God, give us hearts for those around us who are still in darkness, who have not seen Christ as the light. Help us to share with them in love, not judging, but pointing to um, the word of, of Christ that can save or, or become the judge at the final day. We need you 
For all of these reasons, we need you. And for so much more than we can grasp, we need you. And God, you have moved us to love you. Continue, Lord, to move us in a growth in our love for you and dependence upon your word because it is your, it is your word alone that sustains us. We give you today and we trust you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I will see you again.